Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my April and May 2021 uh, manga haul. Um, I do also have some anime to show as well. I've still been pretty good. I have a few things to show, but still, um, you know, I've been decently good at, at um, not buying a ton, uh, though there hasn't been really any sales on chapters um, at all recently within the past few months, so it's been very easy to not buy things when there's no sales. Um, but anyway, I'll get right into it. I recently purchased uh, Ongaku, Our Sound. Uh, this is an excellent, excellent film about these three delinquent guys, um, and our main character, Kenji, just decides that they're gonna, him and his buddies are gonna start a band. They have no musical experience or talent, um, but they just decide that that's what they're gonna do. And then they start prepping for a local um, music festival and they're, that they're going to perform at. And the rival kind of gang at uh, one of their other local high schools is determined to uh, take Kenji down because he's this like renowned delinquent and they feel that he keeps uh, taking out their, their guys. Um, it's hilarious. It's heartwarming. It's a super slice of life music uh, series with excellent, uh, very interesting animation, and it's just highly, highly, highly recommend this. It's got excellent documentaries as well. I do have a full review of this on my channel. I don't know if it's released yet at this point, but it may very well be. Um, if it's not already on my channel, it will be soon. Um, I just pre-schedule all my videos, so I don't remember when that one was coming out. Um, and then another series that I just got actually like yesterday um, as of filming this, is the full complete series of Ergo Proxy. I bought this used as well. Um, all the anime I buy pretty much um, I get from a local used media store. Um, I've been wanting to support them more during the pandemic, so I've been buying more anime the past year than I normally would, um, but anything that's kind of piqued my interest I've, I've just been buying because I want to support the store and I do like anime. So uh, Ergo Proxy is one I've never actually seen, but I have been interested in. Um, ever since it came out. Uh, so many, many years at this point I've been interested in this. I don't know much about it. All I know is it's kind of like trippy and um, looks kind of like cyberpunk-ish or steampunk-ish. I don't, I don't really know um, what the deal is with this, but I've always wanted to watch it and figured I might as well get the whole series. And then the only other anime I got is the complete, I believe this is like limited edition box set uh, of Shangri-La. Uh, this is another one I've never seen, but I was very intrigued um, when I saw this pop up on on the website of my local store, and uh, I looked up the trailer, and I was insanely interested. It's like an apocalyptic series, um, like a dystopian society or utopian society. I don't remember what what, what the correct word is, um, but uh, this is all twenty four episodes. And uh, I'm really stoked to have this. I'm super excited to watch it. This also, same thing uh, as Ergo Proxy, came in literally like the day before I'm filming this. So I have yet to watch these, um, but fully expect that I will do reviews of them when I do eventually watch the entire series of both this and Ergo Proxy. Uh, next up, just some continuations. I got volume 16 of Ajin. This is coming to a close at some point soon. Um, another excellent volume. I'm not going to open it due to spoilers. I'm glad to see that more people are hopping on the train of this series. Uh, I've been collecting it since I think volume 6 came out. Um, and I've been super intrigued and interested and I was disappointed that not many people seem to be picking it up. But it seems the tides have changed and more people are interested in this and are talking about it. So. I'm very happy about that. Um, another series that I've been picking up as it comes out, Flying Witch. This is volume 9. This is a beautiful slice of life um, sort of fantasy series because it does involve uh, a witch in training, but it is set in just regular old, you know, small, small town Japan. Um, and there's just supernatural elements to it. There's usually different creatures and stuff. This one actually had a lot of text in it, um, but it's still fast to read because it's very like slice of life daily shenanigans um, and they meet different creatures. 
uh, supernatural creatures along the way that are more in the witch's realm uh, than the human realm. Um, but yeah, it's adorable. I think it is so charming and relaxing to read. I love the characters. I a lot of people think this is boring. I just, I really love Slice of Life, and I think the art is phenomenal in this series. It just makes me so happy every time a new volume comes out, uh, that they do come out very slowly. However, you really don't need to, um, like, you can just read this as it comes out, because it's, it is a continuous story, but it's so, like, daily life kind of thing that you're not going to be, you know, if you if you forget the characters, like, you're going to remember them immediately anyway because you're, you're just back into the story and it's not like you're trying to remember a thick plot or anything. Um, another one is Volume 7 of My Boy. This is a quite controversial series um, uh, about this woman in her, I believe, early 30s who meets, at the beginning of the series, a boy who is 12 years old and she kind of feels... Um, protective of him and kind of learns a bit more about his home life and she gets a little too involved in his life um, to the point of it being you know a red flag to his his father um, and now he's we've had a time skip he's a little bit older but still you know a teenager um, and we're just kind of watching this relationship kind of grow and build and they're trying to figure out what's happening between them. Um, I'm fairly certain at this point that this is going to go into a territory that a lot of people are going to be uncomfortable with. Uh, at this point in the story, you know, it, it is not explicitly happening yet, um, but there are discussions going in the direction of um, potentially in the future, being a, a legitimate relationship, um, just kind of in all the, like, subtext and, you know, not conversations that they're having with each other, but conversations that, like, she's having with her sister and that, uh, he's having with, with other people, and it's, um, I don't know, I, I enjoy the, vi like, the, the, the atmosphere of this story, and I think that, um, it explores, like, feelings and, loneliness in a very specific way that I find intriguing. Um, I'm going to keep collecting this regardless of what happens. Uh, but, you know, just to be warned that at the beginning people weren't sure where this was going to go, but I'm, I'm fairly certain at this point that um, if the thought of it going in, in a bit of an inappropriate direction disturbs you at all, then just steer clear because, you know, I'd be shocked if it doesn't go that dire direction at this point. Um, another one, finally completed Dengeki Daisy. I managed to get volume two, came back in stock. Uh, it was the only one I was missing out of the 16 volumes. So this is one that I've read, I believe, like I read eight volumes or so of it way back in the day, but I never finished it. Um, and so, because my local library had it at the time, but it wasn't completed yet. Uh, and so now I have the whole series, and I have started reading it. I believe I'm on volume six now, uh, but this one is a romance age gap. Uh, he's in his 20s, she's 16, I believe, and this one's great. It has a really, really good plot um, about, like, cyber hacking and um, things like that, so it's, it's pretty interesting. Like, if you're looking for something that's definitely a romance, um, and definitely shoujo, but but it's got a lot of of kind of tech related plot to it and mystery and intrigue. Uh, this is a good one. And next up, another one I finished uh, was Children of the Sea. This is volume one. Again, I do have a full review of this already on my channel because I had read volume one years ago from my library, and I had the other. I recently purchased the other four omnibuses, um, but now I have volume one in my possession, so if I want to reread it, I can do that. Now, uh, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous series. Um, lots of color pages throughout the entire thing. Um, lots of amazing nature scenes. Uh, it does have an anime film, but it's a pretty out there kind of story about these two boys who were uh, born 
uh, in the ocean and there's some marine biologists and scientists and stuff trying to study them and it's uh they're related somehow to this girl who is who was not born in the ocean there's some kind of connection between them and it's it's very interesting it's hard to kind of keep track of what's going on at most points but honestly even just to look at the incredible artwork i will read this over and over again and then i also purchased the final omnibus uh, or the final volume i guess oh well there's two in there okay uh, omnibus of neon genesis evangelion uh, again, I have a review of this on my channel already, I believe. Yeah, it's up already, um, so you can go watch that. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm not somebody who was familiar with Evangelion before reading the manga. I have not watched the anime, and I will not be watching the anime. Um, you can check out my review video of this to find out more about my thoughts. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I won't open this because of spoilers, but I do really like the art in this. And I thought it was was interesting enough. Um, but yeah, I do have it complete. And another one that I completed, finally, in my possession. The final volume 5 of The Rose of Versailles, uh, put out by Udon. Uh, this one's obviously much thinner than the other releases. Uh, this is all extra stories. So the main story finishes in the fourth omnibus. Uh, and this is all side stories, extra bonus content. Um... So I'll open it up because there really isn't any spoilers or anything, but it's gorgeous, glossy pages. I will say, uh, I don't, I'm assuming it's not just my copy, but maybe it is just my copy. There's a misprint in this, in this volume. Um, I didn't actually look it up. I probably should have, but it didn't bother me too much, um, because all the pages are there, but they're all out of order. Uh, so I got to, um, like page 195. It's like in the 90s, I think. Yeah, okay, this is where it is. Um, you go from page... Like, you're in the 50s. It's somewhere in this story. The two There's two stories. They overlap because uh, the pages are all mixed up. Basically, anyway, I'm just going to... For example, like, I got to page 160, and then where page 161 was supposed to be, it jumped to, like, page 190-something. And I was like, oh, no, it missed a whole gap of the, you know, the story. And so I moved forward and I looked and there, the whole chunk of, you know, page 161 to 189 is in a different part of the book. And so I went to that chunk, read the piece, and then had to go back to where the 190 uh, was, was, read that little chunk, and then had to jump forward again to after where the missing chunk was. Um, so it was confusing. However, all of the pages are here. They're just in the wrong order. Um... So that's unfortunate, but honestly, it doesn't bother me enough to, to go and try and return this. Um, I can live with that. I don't. I don't really care as long as all the content's there. I'm. I. I, I don't really care. Uh, but again, yes, full review of Rose of Versailles is on my channel. I think it's up already. Um, so you can go watch that for for all my thoughts. And then I got the first volume of Even Though We're Adults uh, by Takako Shimura. This is a Seven Seas release. I will buy anything that Takako Shimura, um, any any of her series that get li get licensed here, I will buy, uh, in hopes that one day somebody relicenses or Fantagraphics, if they still have the license, continues to publish, and republish all the out of print volumes of Wandering Sun, uh, my one of my all time favorite series ever. Um, so I will purchase anything Takako Shimura, regardless of what it is. Uh, this one is about two adult women. One is a school teacher, and the other is... I don't remember what she does, actually. Um, either way. Oh, I think she works at a bar. Uh, anyway, they, they kind of... Sparks fly instantly. And uh, we learn that one of them is actually married to a man. Uh, and so... It's clearly a story about figuring out feelings, and uh, this woman is openly, or at least openly within her circle of friends and whatnot, uh, gay. So it is nice to see somebody that it's not just like both both characters are like, oh no, how could I like a girl? Um, so yeah, I enjoyed Takako Shimura's LGBT stories, so I'm super stoked about this one. I think the cover's Gorgeous. I like the art. I am enjoying the story so far. And yeah, 
super, super happy. And then I also bought uh, Fukushima Devilfish by Katsumata Susumu. This is a, I think it's Breakdown Press is the publisher. Um, so this is an alternative manga. Uh, I do own, I believe it's Red Snow by the same mangaka. This one is particularly focused on nuclear uh, power plant. It's, it's all short stories, mostly focusing on like nuclear uh, issues or issues uh, involving um, nuclear power. And uh, yeah, so it's very fascinating. The back has a bunch of essays. There's four, four different essays, two of which are by the mangaka and two are uh, by other people about the mangaka and, and this manga in particular. Um, but yeah, this is all alternative alternative manga, all kind of focusing on um, nuclear power and the dangers of it and the reasons why uh, this mangaka in particular is like, hey, we why, why is Japan using nuclear power constantly? Um, it's unsafe, it shouldn't be used, and so he's kind of like giving his political opinion on this, this subject uh, through manga, and I think that's really fascinating. I've read all the essays already, but I've only read one of the actual manga stories so far, um, but I'm super stoked to have this, and yeah, I, I'm excited. I've known about this for a little while, a couple years, um, and I've always wanted to, to check it out, and now I have it, so. And then finally, the one of my new prized possessions um, is the entire series of Twin Spica by Ko Yaginuma. This is an older vertical release that began licensing in English in 2010. Uh, it is wildly out of print. When it was in print, or when it was being published, it did not sell well. Um, and so Vertical actually ended up uh, putting omni putting them in omnibuses. It's 16 volumes in total in Japan, um, and Vertical ended up thankfully not just canceling publishing it, but rather decided to start releasing the final like six volumes or so in omnibus format so that they could publish all of it uh, without um, having to continue at a, you know, financial loss, basically, because people weren't buying the volumes. This is a beautiful slice of life space, uh, space series. Um, it isn't set in space, but it's basically these young adults, they're, they're high school students. Uh, this is set in 2024 in, and it was written in, in 2004, I believe in Japan. So it was a futuristic 20 years in the future title at the time um, about our main character here and her group of friends who are at this space school uh, where they're training to be astronauts. Um, and they're going through rigorous training to become astronauts and follow their dreams of going to space. And it is one of the best things I think I've ever read in terms of manga. I've wanted to read this forever and just could not, couldn't get my hands on it. Um, Cause like I said, it's wildly out of print. And so I found this set actually on eBay last year. Uh, I believe it was April of last year in 2020. And this guy um, in Toronto was selling it and he wanted, I think 380 Canadian dollars for it. And I offered him 250 and he said, no. And so I went, you know what? I'm not paying any more than that. Um, so, you know, so be it. It's not meant to be. And then I noticed I was on eBay the other day, well, a few weeks ago now, I guess, um, and same guy still trying to sell his set. Uh, this time his price was $240. And so I offered him $200 and he took it. Uh, so I got all 12 of the English full series release of Twin Speaker for $200 Canadian. Um, perfect condition. Basically, there's like a little bit of yellowing on some of the outer pages of the earlier volumes, but honestly, this was worth every single cent. 
uh, I calculated out um, if I had bought these brand new uh, for cover price. I only ended up paying $18 more than cover price at the time. Uh, these volumes, you know, back 10 years ago, were going for $15.95 Canadian. Um, and the earlier, I think, were like $12.99 or something or $13.99. Uh, this size of volume from Vertical right now goes for $17.50 Canadian. So if you uh, account for inflation, I actually paid less than cover price if this were to come out today and I paid full price for it. So... I think I got a steal of a deal. I am so happy to own this. It was, I finished reading it yesterday, I believe. Um, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read in my life. And I will absolutely be filming a full series review of this, so look out for that. But I am so, so, so happy to have this. And um, yeah, I, I just, I'm blown away by this series. It is so heartwarming and it's just it's about following your dreams and just what that means uh to to young people to people who are older who who didn't who didn't continue with their dreams or you know those who who were taken too soon and and don't get to to live out all all of their aspirations and it's just i i have goosebumps right now just talking about it i just i just gotta chill i just this is so good Anyway, look up for a full series review. That is everything I, I purchased in the months of April and May. Uh, yeah, smaller haul, but honestly, like I'm so, so happy with everything I have. Um, yeah, I've been focusing more on buying things that, that, that I know will make me very, very happy as opposed to just buying things for the sake of it because um, I'm running out of space in my bedroom. And I also am just trying to save some money, and uh, and like I said, there's been no sales really for on chapters, uh, which is by where I buy the majority of my manga, and I can't go to used thrift stores or anything because we're in complete shutdown, uh, and have been for for many months now. Um, so, yeah, the, like all my avenues of, of purchasing manga are pretty much cut off, and so uh, it's been very easy to not buy anything, or buy very little, I should say. Anyway. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or anything about any of the series you saw, let me know. Like I said, most of the things that you saw already have a either first impressions or full review or the, or one of them or a video will be coming uh, at some point soon. So yeah, thanks for watching.